Common rail injection installation is something that I wanted to revisit today. Uh, we have a lot of problems arise with uh, people not installing injectors correctly, uh, and they have problems with the feed tube alignment to the injector and torque values and whatnot. So we're gonna go back through that. We've already done an installation of a complete install of common rail injectors on your 5.9, but what we wanted to do is we wanted to focus on installing the injectors themselves individually. So I'm not gonna hit on the rest of the install. I wanna go through this and, and show you the correct way to align feed tubes and the, cor the correct torquing procedures for installation. So if you purchase new injectors from us, they'll come with cap on either end of the injector uh, for, the, uh, for the nozzle and both covering the solenoid. Now, this plastic cap that actually covers the solenoid, not only does it protect it in shipping, but it's also to help you with installation. So we're gonna install the injector right now. First off, you wanna install your injector first and you're gonna to wanna to lubricate your O-ring on the injector. We just use petroleum jelly. Okay, and then you'll want to remove the cap off of the nozzle and give just a little bit of a little bit of grease on it as well. And that's to hold your copper compression wash the copper compression washer onto the injector. Now you notice we're gonna leave this plastic cap on the end of the injector. This is actually to help you to install so you don't hurt the solenoid when you're when you're installing the injector. So Again, like we covered in our first video, you want your the feed hole for the injector, you want this towards the driver's side of the truck where the nozzle will be able to engage it. So we're gonna put the injector in now with the alignment hole towards the driver's side of the truck. Okay, now here's where your cap comes into play. When you leave this cap on the injector, when you go to push it into the bore, once you get it started, just take the palm of your hand and push the injector straight down and it should click. That's what the cap is actually for and to protect the solenoid. So we're gonna leave the cap on there while we're putting our feed tube in. Now, our feed tube. Normally when we do an installation here at the shop, we usually go back with all new feed tubes, okay? If there's any question of the condition of the feed tube, be it in the O-ring or the end of the feed tube where it engages the injector, always replace the feed tube more problems in feed tubes and feed tube alignment to the injector than there is anything else in this whole in this whole job. So we're gonna give the O-ring a light coat of grease. Now we're gonna install it into the injector. Now you have these balls on the uh, on the feed tube and these are meant to go up. There's a channel cut for those in the head. Okay. Now in installing these, we actually use a tool that goes over the thread of the feed tube, and that's to keep you from damaging the thread of the feed tube. We're just gonna screw that on a few screw, uh, a few turns, pop our feed tube in, and you can hear it pop. Okay, now what we're gonna do to make sure that we're properly engaged into the injector is we're just gonna work the injector back and forth here and make sure that we see the feed tube moving. That means that we are engaged in the injector correctly. Once we've installed our injector, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our, our injector hold down bolts in and we're not tightening these, we're just gonna put them in hand tight. Okay, these are metric 10 bolts. And again, we're not snugging these down, we're just putting them in here a couple turns. All right. We've got our, our injector in, our feed tube aligned here, okay? We're gonna, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put uh, all of our retainers on here, okay? We're gonna start with our two injector hold down bolts. These are both metric eight bolts and we're not tightening these at all. We're just putting them in a couple turns here just to hold the injector in line. and also so we don't lose the bolts. And now our feed tube hold down nut, which is a metric 24. We start this. Okay. And now we're ready for our torque sequence. Okay, so again, 
what is so critically important here is we know for 100% positive that we have the feed tube in line with the injector feed hole. Okay, so we're going to do our first torque value here and it's going to be on our feed tube. Okay, our feed tube, our initial torque is going to be about 12 foot pounds. And what this is going to do is this is going to set our feed tube into our injector bore. Now again, we don't have our injector tight, only hand tight. And we're going to start our feed tube first. This is going to be our first tightening sequence. So 24 metric for the feed tube retaining nut. This is going to be our first torque. 12 foot pounds. Okay, there's that. Now we're going to go to our hold downs. Now our hold downs, we're going to torque these. We're going to alternate between the two. We're going to go 90 degrees at a time with each one. And we're going to take the injector hold down to 89 inch pounds. Now, working around the injector, you want to be very conscious around your solenoid studs. You want to make sure, I leave the cap on them, so I don't, just to protect the solenoid. Uh, you know, that's a very good practice. I try to work in about 90 degree turns on this, and I alternate between the two. And again, we're taking this to 89 inch pounds. Now this is an important torque. So if you never had your torque ratchet checked or verified before you do this job always make sure that you do that okay that's our injector hold downs again that torque value that's a one-time torque at 89 inch pounds now we're coming back out to the feed tubes this is our final torque on our feed tubes and for the 5.9 common rail, your final torque value is 34 foot-pounds. Okay. 20, 24 metric here on the feed tubes. And we simply take that to 34 foot-pounds. And that is the correct way to torque down common rail injector on the 5.9 Cummins, remove my cap, that has your feed tube set, your injector's torqued down, and everything's perfect, okay? Now we're going to go back with our rocker arm, our torque value for our rocker arm for on the exhaust side is going to be 27 foot-pounds. You can do that torque in two steps if you'd like, if you'd like to do 12 and then take it to 27, or take it straight to 27. Then we'll run the rack on it, we'll run top side and check all our, our valve clearances. Again, we covered that in the other video. And our wiring harness. Now, I want to stress this again. This is a very, very important torque value. When we go back to put our wiring harness on our injector, our torque value for this is 13 inch pounds, which is a very, very, very light torque. Why is that important? Couple reasons. If you over torque these, what you're going to do is you're actually going to break the studs off in the solenoid. That is a non-warranty situation. It will not be covered under warranty by uh, any of our fuel shop distributors that you'll that you'll deal with. Um, industrial injection, DDP, uh, for sure, are not going to cover a broken stud under warranty that's been over torqued. Now, further into that stretching of the studs. In this solenoid, if you over torque this, if you don't break it and you over stretch it, you're gonna, you're gonna uh, change the resistance of the contact inside of the solenoid and the, the electronic signal is not gonna be the same. So if you overstretch it, you're gonna, 
if you have a warranty situation with the uh, with the injector, if they find these studs to be stretched, yeah, that'll be a, a non-warranty item as well. So again, a rocker arms on, 27 foot pounds. We'll put a rocker box on and our wiring harness. Take these these solenoid nuts, 13 inch pounds, 13 inch pounds, and we should have a good install here.